Pennsylvania, but I drop it off at her daughter's house in uh, Virginia. And she flies into Dulles, and then her daughter picks her up, and then they're right there in Virginia. So drop her off, and I've got another. I'm picking up another one in about an hour. I didn't really. I guess. I guess I should have asked. I thought I was picking up a different vehicle for them because I brought one down for them. I brought a uh, uh, what was it? A Yukon? Yeah, it was a Denali, a Yukon Denali, a little older than what my wife has. Maybe like a 2012, something like that. Maybe. That's what I thought I was picking back up, but apparently I'm only picking like a two-door Jeep up to head back up. They live in the same development, and I don't know if they're related or what, but I'm going to be honest with you, I don't even know where I'm dropping it off yet. I do a lot of work with these guys. Um, personal, they have a, a very big, uh, I guess you could call it a scrapyard, but more like auto parts, recycling and stuff. They sell used parts. Uh, and then the, the owner fixes a bunch of stuff. He's always got projects going on. Like he'll, he'll get a, he'll get a, the last one I got was, he got a Jeep, newer Jeep that needed some more. I think he needed like a rear end. And so he bought a parts, parts vehicle off Copart for it. Uh, and then got it shipped in through me. So he has, uh, they buy a co-part every week locally, and he's got like a seven car that goes and picks all of them. But he's got like four car rollbacks. He's got a bunch of trucks. I'd say probably five to 10 trucks. But anyways, anything like longer distance that he doesn't want to send one of his drivers for just one vehicle, he'll have me ship it in for him. So I do a lot of work with him, so I don't really like have to ask questions like give me the addresses and let me know who to call and uh sure enough i figured it out i'm picking up a jeep and i think it's his brother so i may be just dropping it off in the yard because they've got plenty of room there or they probably live in town which is not a big deal at all it's kind of one of those situations I enjoy where it's like show up when you can, drop off when you can, and pay whatever you ask, take your time, it's never really any hurry, just when you can get it, get it, and I didn't really know I was getting this car till, till the end of last week, it talked about it, but I guess they were up in there if they were coming home at that time, and they're gonna fly back, but they wanted this Jeep up for the summer. Since it gets pretty nice in our area, obviously they want uh, they want to utilize it if they're not gonna be down here in Florida. Like it just gets too hot down here. So I had a nice little stroll this morning across. Like you don't realize how much farmland is in Florida till you get to like the center of Florida. Like there is ranch after ranch after ranch out here cattle everywhere i mean i went across a couple of uh you know waterways like with a let like that have levee systems in and you see like that you see an alligator's head just popping up floating across the water so it's i couldn't i could i could not live down here i was thinking about this earlier i could not live down here and then constantly be like worried about stepping on a snake or you know an alligator coming out of the water i i don't like that i don't like reptiles i you know we got that pond at the farm and you know we swim in it all summer long it's got a you know a deck with a two-story deck jump off that you know we're always sitting down there drinking beer the dogs are swimming I don't really have to worry about anything getting them, but that's why I couldn't live down here. But, it's a different way of life. It's nice to see that I, I enjoy the country, the ranch, the open fields, the animals. Whether it be cattle or horses, that's what I, I enjoy. It. So it's nice to see. Because
because here shortly we'll be on the other side. We'll be up on 95. We'll be in the heart of uh, all the beach and city goers. Feeling a little, uh, I wouldn't say down. It's just, I'm ready for a break. You guys that are on the road and away from, away from your family for work, you know how it is. You just, you know, you wake up in a different city, miss your family, and then, you know, get some caffeine in you, get moving a little bit, and everything's all right. You'll make it home eventually. So, I'll be home. I'll be home tomorrow morning at some point before lunch tomorrow. I'm gonna drop the uh, Volvo off to the lady in Virginia on my way through. I don't think she'll be there. No, she flies out to she flies out tomorrow. So um, she won't be there, but I can just drop it off at her daughter. So I will kind of come through that area in Virginia. So I'm just gonna go ahead and drop it. That way, Friday, all I have to do is drop the Jeep. Pennsylvania, and I think I'll have a small job for my wife on Friday of a truck bed she'll deliver for me. That was interesting. Now, uh, I don't know if you guys watch Cletus, and they were talking about near when he was going through all that development stuff with the, them trying to put the houses in, and they were going to put in like a racing community. Where, like people could like store their cars and then take them over to the tracks or and build like you know maybe a, a racetrack or something and have like drive up condos that's so what that place just said it was p1 motor club it said like something about automotive community but it was just like a sign out by the road and it's just a bunch of uh orchards here instead of orange trees Maybe they're putting one of those in out here. It's crazy the amount of houses that are going up in Florida. Though. That's why everybody says stop moving here. Like all the all the people that are local hate it. But stop yapping. Get to knocking down some miles here. Well, since we're sitting in traffic here, um, so this morning, Strex got almost 177,000 miles. And knock on wood, I've never had an issue with emissions on this truck. Everything's still intact on this one. And uh, so this is, and this is no way an ad or they are not paying me to say this. But Top Don sent me this scanner a long time ago. Um, I actually got it through TikTok. So if you're interested in one of these, I think they're like 180 bucks. But I'll tell you, I'm not trying to sell you on it, but I'll tell you why I'm so thankful I had this in the truck. So this morning, I I there was my truck was running while I was um while I was loading the car, and I noticed that like the idle kicked up. I was like, that's weird. It's like real. It's 88 degrees here, real muggy, and I was like, man, that's that's weird. So I get back in the truck, check engine lights on. Well, I get on the screen here. It says. Exhaust filter 100% fuel unable to regen or or something along those lines and I was like well it Sucks turn the truck off turn it back on still on and I had kind of forgot I had this in here I thought I had one of my little handheld ones. I was gonna grab it read the code and then try to clear it Well sure enough couldn't grab a scanner this is the there's the model on it and I was actually able to force a regen with this hundred and eighty dollar tool it's pretty impressed because I know how especially on newer vehicles they're a little finicky about what they let you do as far as being able to get in the computer and this thing is chargeable so it's actually like turn it on now but I was able to get in I was able to check all the pressure sensors you can do like self test on all the exhaust sensors um, knock sensor everything and then I was able to force a regen uh, once I got out of the neighborhood went get fuel pulled into a um, 
pulled into like a little gal, a little mom and pop gas station, got this out and uh, actually forced a regen on it. And knock on wood, it's been probably 200 or so miles since then. And I haven't had the light come back on. Haven't had any messages about the um, about the exhaust filter being full, full or anything like that. And I've never, I've never had to like force a regen on this truck. It's barely ever had a check engine light. The only other time I had a real fault in this thing for anything to do with the exhaust filter. It was seven below zero and I was in Fort Wayne, Indiana. I think that's where it was. It was snowing like crazy. It was really, really cold. I had a fault. I stayed in a hotel that night, came back out the next morning, started my truck up, went back inside, ate breakfast, came back out and everything was fine. So I don't know if it, it when it was warming up that morning, if it did a regen while I was eating breakfast, I let it run for probably 30 minutes or so but pretty thankful I had this scanner. Again, not trying to sell you on it, but for 180 bucks just to keep us in your truck. If you're interested, go to my TikTok. There's a link in there. Um, I do get a kickback on it. Again, not paid to say any of this, but this may have just kind of saved my day, saved me some money, um, which would have been more than $180. That's for sure if I had to stop at a shop down here. Welcome to Florida, where every community is gated. Well, it's like two and a half miles back into this community. So I came through the gate, pulled up to the guest spot. It's a, it's a country club and golf community, and I have, I'm delivering a golf cart. So the hell, the lady just opened the gate. She didn't even come out. So it explains why this guy wanted a very nice golf cart because that's you can see one right up here in front of us that's how they get around back here and they cover quite a that's a stop sign just ran the stop sign ma'am she must be too turned up from her round of golf today but i guess if there's no cops you can't get a dui back here but we got a snake all our way back here it's my bear customer well, that was a customer that just pulled up right there. So he's gonna get turned around here and I'm gonna follow him back to his house. That worked out perfectly. It just keeps getting nicer and nicer as we go back through here. Well, I will have you know that electric golf cart does 35 miles an hour. Ask me how I know. <laughs> the customer and I had to test it out. He said it went that fast. He wanted to know what he paid for. So it does 30 mi 35 miles an hour and is, is street legal here as long as you can go the posted speed limit or you, they have a sidewalk to where you can... Uh, where golf carts are able to ride on. Well, just another beautiful day of trying to get home. What happened? We got a fire? We got a car in the ditch? What do we got going on? Oh, Lord. We got a truck in the ditch. box truck way down in there this guy stopped up here I wonder I wonder how that happened because there ain't much uh, this is 295 unless that guy saw what happened it's not really like there's a sharp turn it's a nice beautiful sunny day or someone cut him off I don't know I'm going to be able to get to this person's house. I need 
get him either. about Google Maps and Google Earth like you can go up and down the street and I'm like looking for places that I'm gonna be able to pull over and have enough room that cars can get by but I'm not on um, a corner you can also see things like the speed limit signs and um, you know if, if there's parking on the street that's one thing you don't like if people are parking on the street I don't always have two lanes so I was looking for crossroads of where I could deliver if there was like a less busy you know side street I could unload there so it's one good thing about Google Maps is using that to, to look for things like speed limit signs and know how fast people are going to be coming down those roads uh, it's a great tool. So last night I spent probably 15-20 minutes while I was waiting for my food at Waffle House to um, yeah 15-20 minutes to get food at Waffle House. It was a it was a popping place last night at midnight and I'm not even talking like either I'm on if I'm eating Waffle House either I'm on the road and it's like late and nothing else is open or I have been out drinking with buddies all night in my younger days that's the only time i go to wall pumps but that place was popping last night and every not everybody was dr like i don't even know if anybody had been like drinking or anything it's just regular people a couple a couple other truck drivers that were staying close by there's a bunch of hotels and stuff around there and uh so 15 20 minutes i think i found a spot that i'm gonna be comfortable unloading at uh, but i guess it really all depends on what cars are parked on the street there and uh i mean it's early but i think morning traffic should be through and uh if i have to end up like you know walking a half a mile or something i don't really that doesn't really bother me i just uh like i said the main reason i'm doing this is it saves me about four hours of time which is four hours of time with the family i'm also going to uh i've got one more round of snowbirds next week and then i think i'm going to take some time off I think I'm going to take probably maybe at least a week of being home. I may do some local work, but I really want to get my Mega Cab back together. So I'll put the new head on that, get that all back together. I had thought about towing it to a shop, a buddy's shop, and just having him finish. But I kind of like doing the work if I'm home and have the time. It gives me something to do. Um, it's always it saves me money and it's uh, you know an opportunity to make some different kind of videos and make some different kind of content because in 1.6 miles in reality I would really like to step up my content game make make different videos uh, find other ways to produce income through those videos and give me more time at home and I feel this way I'm a little like you know a little homesick because I this is this is my busy time and then like October when the snowbirds are moving. You know, it's not often I do back to back to back to back trips to Florida. Uh, usually it's like a once a, once a month thing, but now being snowbird season, I'm busy. And I, uh, I enjoy being home. So. I wish it was right here because this place, I don't know if the camera it might not be wide enough but this is like wide open like businesses there's like a couple closed down places there's a huge shoulder it's like i wish they were delivering right here a couple places that are closed that open later today i mean heck there's like a big empty lot right there too bad i can't be delivering right here i think i got about another mile up the road there might be something i can use to my advantage here they have speed bumps or speed humps should i say oh I'm still about uh, a mile away but it's a neighborhood like this so 
Like I use the speed humps to my advantage to not have to worry about people trying to fly by. That would be nice. I know it gets into like these thick trees back here and it gets a little windies. Really just hoping I can uh, I can make the turns because of how long this trailer is. But that is Alexandria money right there. And then next to one of the original houses that was probably built down here. Hey, this is what I'm talking about right here. Not a terrible turn, but also a little tight if there was traffic. We are good, man. This is a lot bigger than what Google or, or Google Maps made it look like. I'm gonna be able to pull up right to the customer's house. I have enough room to unload on the side because I can probably pull up. As long as nobody's coming out of their driveway, I might have to block one or two, but. You should be good. Nope, this is gonna work. I think their house is that one right there. So I got plenty of room. Cars can see me, not blocking any driveway that a car can't get out of. They'd be able to get out of that driveway if they needed to. All right, I gotta unload this Jeep first though, and I'm gonna back it and put it right there and put its four ways on. Kind of let people know, and then this is the one that gets delivered.